Good morning. I basically slept the best I think I've slept my whole life because I was so tired yesterday. But today is Black Friday and I also have work today. I don't know why they would give us work the Friday after Thanksgiving. But I'm gonna go Black Friday shopping before work. I think I have to be back by one, I believe. But Zara in Europe is already so much cheaper than America that hopefully I have some good finds just in general. But then again, for the sake of my suitcase and the fact that I have no space, maybe not. We'll see. Let's go shopping. I didn't give you guys an update on the date last night. It was really fun. He had a really nice personality. He was Canadian, but was touring Europe and this remote work and I'm so jealous because I wish I wish I could work remotely and be wandering every other continent right now instead of getting ready to go back to New York but it was cool it was nice we got Thai food I will say Oregon sucks but the one thing no one's really competed in Oregon with is Thai food Oregon Thai food is undefeated and I'm really excited I get a whole week here because I think if the weather's supposed to stay like this. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited. It is yet another stunning day. I'm shopping. It's already very crowded, so this is good. I think I have three hours before I have to be back for work. I just did a lot of shopping. Jeez. I'm going to run and go to brunch before I have to start work. The fact that I am one block from Zara and every other store, dangerous. Zara here wasn't doing like all their fitting rooms were closed so you have to buy everything and then go home and try it but again it's one block so it's fine Woo! tell me how you feel about these glasses these are from pull and bear which we don't have in the states but i've seen every other country in europe and yeah i think i'm gonna wear this while i'm walking around to brunch but I will give you all, or maybe it'll be a separate video, but I promise I'm doing a haul with my Black Friday in. Would you believe this whole bag of stuff was $161 or euros? Crazy. Everything is already, Zara here is already so much cheaper. And then on top of that, you add 40% off and We'll have to try everything. Okay. All right. I'm going to go get food. And then I got work. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Bye. It keeps getting hotter. I'm not complaining. I just packed all the wrong clothes. But it's fine. Okay. This is great. Now I'm wandering these hills for a workout, honey. A workout. The outfit pics I could be getting if I was not here by myself would be crazy, but it's fine. Just take a second to admire the sun. Hello. So nice out. I did more shopping. Ah, uh, how am I gonna bring these back? I don't know, but now I have work. Whew. I went to a different Zara. I went to Mango. Oh my gosh. I'm 
I'm a little scared because the Wi-Fi in this Airbnb is not the best. And normally it's fine because I could use cellular data from my phone, but for some reason I don't really get that in this apartment. Also, I got this film camera. It's a reusable one. I had like a professional film person wind it up correctly for me. And I went to go take a picture today. I went to take a picture, so I don't know what's going on. But I wish I didn't have work tech right now. I didn't even get to have my second coffee of the day. I'm sure I'll go get another cup. Luckily, it's Friday. Which is already pretty quiet. Secondly, oh, the people that took off for Thanksgiving are still off. So, I think it'll be chill. It'll be fine. I just need to be on. If you're my manager and you're watching this, I was on the whole time, okay? I've been working so much today. Realize with traveling and working remotely, where you stay really matters, especially if there's a time difference. For example, with London, not only is London really spread out, but I don't think I did the best job of picking an Airbnb because it wasn't in a central location, which was great because I was living with the locals, but it meant that by the time I was done with work, which was about 9, 10 p.m. London time, I'd have to walk 15 minutes to the closest train and then be on the train for another 15 to 30 minutes to go where I could get food versus in Madrid I was really central and right now I'm really central again which is amazing because by the time I'm done with work tonight there's a block behind me is a street full of restaurants so I'm not gonna feel like weird or unsafe or too tired to want to go get food with London by the time it was dinner time I was like am I about to go outside right now no I'm really not and it was also just so freezing cold that I didn't really eat dinner, I don't think, the whole week I was there. Just because it didn't make sense to be done working at 9, 10 p.m. And then go our 30-minute commute, just go sit down somewhere. So, basically, pick a good place. Re I read so many reviews to see what people are saying about the location of the Airbnb. I'm not sure how well I did with Paris, just because, again, Paris is really spread out, it seemed. So there were various parts where people were like, this is a great location. So we'll see. But I'm excited for the fact that by the time I'm done tonight, I can just go wander. Also, not to mention that I usually never think paying an Uber is worth it. But I Ubered from dinner last night and it was two, like less than three euros. How are Uber prices so cheap? I don't understand. Make it make sense. Three euros. From the airport, it was seven euros. I, I'm confused on how they, how it could be so cheap. I don't know, I'm really liking it here. Absolutely nobody is online, including my manager. So I'm chilling, I'm vibing scrolling through tiktok one thing i was thinking about recently is i think every person has a city or maybe a few cities where their soul belongs and i know i keep thinking about madrid but for example for me oregon is so far from what that city is for me. Every time I go to Oregon, there's where my family is, I think I revert internally, psychologically, emotionally. I could do all of the self work, but as soon as I'm back in Oregon, it's as if none of that has happened. And I just become what I feel is like one of the worst versions of myself, which is ridiculous to think that a location could have such an effect. But Oregon has been a depressing place for me since I moved there senior year of high school. And even though I no longer live there, every time I go back there, it's like my soul dies in Oregon. New York, 
is an in-between where it's like, I love New York, but it's not home. And the more I've been traveling and the more I've been talking to people that live all over the world, I think everybody has their place. Everybody has their city where your soul feels at home. And reason number a million why I hope everybody watching this starts traveling is I wish for everybody to find that city and what that city looks like and feels like for them. Oh my god, I was finally about to go to this photo bar. But these hills are out here looking crazy. I call that 3 euro Uber real quick. <laughs> real quick. Look at these hills. It's like I already came so far. I just want you to keep going up. No, thank you. Thank you, but no, thank you. This place is so cute. You have to come here. You come to Lisbon. You have to come here, okay? It feels weird recording because there's like only five tables. But it's so cute. Fui ainda ir sozinho, sem pensar em tudo quanto foi amor em nós. Andava mais saudades do ar. experience i don't think i've ever had an eating live music experience like that ever before first of all the owner and his son were adorable it's so sweet so kind the couple sitting next to me was so cute they've been together 35 years i was the only one there by myself but it didn't really bother me because this bigger conversation hold on I came to a conclusion tonight that I think has been a few weeks marinating in my mind, but just the importance of romance. And I used to think romance was reserved for romantic partners, but I realized anybody could be a romantic partner. You could be your own romantic partner. And I don't know if it's just because I'm such a hopeless romantic, but I love doing romance and romantic stuff, even like whether it's by myself, whether it's with my friends. I love going on little dates with my friends and doing, like, cute stuff. I don't know. Why do we need to save romance for somebody that we're dating or marrying or are married to? Why does it have to be that way? Like, can anybody be a romantic partner? Can't you do romantic stuff with anybody that's meaningful to you? It doesn't have to be and shouldn't be in a sexual way, I don't think. Not in the way I interpret romance, at least, but... I don't know, I'm like so frustrated with society for ingraining that into us. And frustrated myself for taking this long to realize that I could be romantic and do romantic stuff by myself or with my friends or with anybody. And it's so nice when you unlock that and you realize you aren't and shouldn't be limited in your experiences or fun waiting or sticking around for something that isn't working i don't know there was a couple that was clearly talking about me i don't know if it was good or bad but this they were a younger couple but this girl was looking at me and talking clearly i'm not used to seeing catching people talking about me i think in america people talk about you they're a lot more shady about it. This person was not being shady about it at all. I was. I just wanted to know what they were saying. Just so curious. But I was sitting next to this couple. They've been together 35 years. From Switzerland. They met when they were 18. And they were just life partners. And 
don't know it just made me realize I'm so excited for the day that somebody could be with me to share these travels whether it's a friend like my best I'm so excited for my best friends to travel with me I'm so excited for my family to travel with me I'm so excited for one day somebody that I'm like seeing to travel with me but until then like I I'm not gonna wait like there's so much to see they were telling me about all their favorite places Galapagos Island Cuba and I was like why wow, I hadn't even thought about those as a list of places to go but they'd seen it all and those were their favorites so obviously adding to the list and it's really nice meeting strangers sometimes I don't know it was just a really sweet night and another thing I've been thinking about is I've been wondering if I have commitment issues. But on the date, the guy I was on a date with, he was a therapist. But he heard me talk about my parents and my family. And I've genuinely had the best example of love and relationships with my parents. And I'm so blessed and I'm so grateful for that. But because that's what I've seen and that's what I know to exist... Why would I settle for anything less than that? I'm not going to. So I don't think it's that I have commitment issues. I realize in talking to this man, it's just that I have really high hopes and standards and expectations for what I want from people that are in my life. And I'm so tired of that being made to seem like a bad thing. Like why is having high standards a bad thing? Why is having high expectations a bad thing? I was watching the Bachelorette episode the day before I came here and that annoying guy with the bleach hair, I don't even remember his name, went on this rant about high-maintenance women. Bruh, just say you're not enough. Like, why is, why is it always the narrative that women are too much? Why is it never, hey, I can't give you what you need, somebody else out there can, let me remove myself so you could go get that. Why is, I'm so like the the criticism of high maintenance women. Whatever you want in this world, no matter who you are, there's somebody out there that can give that to you. And I'm like, nothing is too much. So tired of the narrative always being of women being too much. Why is it never then the men aren't enough? And I'm talking very cis heterosexual relationships. My apologies. But it's like, could we just take ownership of like not being able to give someone what they deserve and removing ourselves out of their lives so they could go find that? Like, let's normalize that instead of manipulating people into making themselves smaller so we could feel better about ourselves. He had me just really triggered, to be honest. I, I don't even think anyone's ever even called me high maintenance, but... I'm just tired of the narrative of women having to, like, make themselves small and having to lower their standards and having to lower their expectations. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that? For someone that's clearly admitting they're not good enough for you, why would you do that? So I have no intentions of doing that. And while they were playing this music, this beautiful music that I didn't understand a word of, I was thinking about how I have no intentions of sticking through someone not giving me what I need and what I deserve in hopes that one day they will. And I know you you hear this and you're like, why would you, why would you even think that way? But trust me, I think a lot of us think this way without even realizing we think this way. But Fado, the the kind of music is about sorrow and nostalgia and like yearning and mourning and hearing these artists sing these beautiful songs full of love. It's like if it doesn't make you feel that way, why do it? And that makes you feel that way and like, oh my god, this person is so bad. They make me feel like shit. But in like a, this is a great love and I like yearn for that love. You know what I mean? Like, why why settle when so much magic is possible and there's so much world to see and so many people to meet and so many experiences to have? Like, why are we sticking in our bubbles? Because that's what's comfortable for us. 
we're too hot, we're too smart, we're too kind, we're too giving to be wasting our time and energy on somebody that's not reciprocating that, you know? And I'm going on this rant as if this is happening to me. I promise this isn't even happening to me. i just been thinking about how I used to think in the past and realizing that so many other people need to snap out of this. Like, let's all have a great awakening where we ask for exactly what we need and exactly what we want and walk away if somebody doesn't give that to us. Like, let's normalize that. No matter how you identify, no matter who you're dating. And again, it doesn't even have to be in relationships, honey, with work with work like let's all let go of what does not serve us i did that and almost doubled my salary even with my manager and people at work trying to make me feel small and tell me that i didn't deserve it that it's going to be the biggest mistake of my life that i wasn't going to get it hello i did it and i'm so happy i did it and with every decision in my life this far that i've made Although it was really hard at the time, walking away from what didn't serve me, I swear the universe responds. The universe, the more you say no to what you don't want, the more accurate their algorithm gets. It's like, okay, this is not it. Let me send you something better. Let me send you like, okay, you're not you're not into this. Let me send you what you are into. Like, I swear the universe is on its own algorithm, honey. We just got to figure out how to hack the system. We got to hack the system. Life is too short to be miserable. Life is too short to be miserable in your jobs. Life is too miserable to be... Life is too short to be miserable in your relationships. Life is too miserable to... Life is too short to be miserable in your location. Like, what in your friendships. Like, whatever it is, girl, just... Or boy, or non-binary, whatever you identify, just... Go do what makes you happy. Go do what lights your soul on fire. Because we deserve to feel that way and we're all capable of feeling that way. That was a 10 minute rant. I'm so sorry. I just... That's what you do when you solo travel. You think, you think, and then you come to these conclusions. I feel like I have my best revelations while I'm solo traveling. Also, because I realize when I'm solo traveling, I have the desire to not talk to anybody like, the more people that have been texting me, the less I've been wanting to respond to anybody. Because I'm just doing me and I'm just having fun and wandering and exploring. So, yeah. That was the end of my rant. So thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Um, that'll be all. Good night.